Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I am a knitter and maker living in Seattle, Washington. And today I want to talk to you about everything that I got up to in the month of June. I um, hope you guys are having a good summer so far, uh, enjoying some sunshine, some warm weather. Hopefully it's not too hot where you are um, and hopefully you're enjoying your summer knits. Um, I have not knit this month as much as I normally do. Things have been very busy and I've just been very tired and so I have not been doing as much knitting as I normally would. But I still have some things to show you, um, some projects to talk to you about, some yarn I've gotten that I want to show you and talk to you about the plans for. Um, and yeah, today might be a little bit shorter than normal but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, um, I do have one finished object and that's what I'm wearing today that you can't really see very well because it's this quite dark navy blue yarn. Um, but this is the Air Tea by Ozetta, which, as you can see, is just kind of a short sleeve summer tea. I test knit this for her. Um, you saw it last month as a work in progress, and I wrapped it up in the first couple weeks of June. So it was a really fun knit. I think I knit it up in about three weeks, so I knit it up pretty quickly for a fingering weight yarn. I ended up knitting mine in 100% wool. Um, but this is a wool that I bought secondhand from a thrift store. It's a kind of a vintage wool and it's, it is 100% wool, but it's very dry. It feels kind of cottony um, and it doesn't, I don't know, it's not as warm as like, I, it doesn't feel hot like normal wool. Um, so I think it works fine for a summer top, especially where I live, where like most summer days are in the low 70s. It's really pretty comfortable. Um, so I've really enjoyed wearing this so far. I've worn it a couple times already and I will come close so you can see the details. So the collar, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see, has this really pretty detail where you kind of knit a few rounds and then do the I-cord bind off. It's got I-cord bind off on all the sleeves as well as the hem and then the real pretty, oh that's better. The cool design feature on this is the back. You kind of knit this panel across the back, which I'm hoping you can see. Yes. You knit this panel across the back um, and then pick up stitches underneath it for the back and then it kind of carries over into the sleeve when you pick up stitches for that. So it has a really pretty design feature in that way. The fit is really nice. Um, this pattern I knit in the size 2 um, and normally for Ozetta's patterns I knit the size 3 so this is a, has a little bit less ease um, than the pattern suggested but it still has like I don't know probably five five inches of positive ease so it's good um, it's very comfortable I'm perfectly happy with the fit mine is a lot less drapey than a lot of the other testers I think because I'm using a wool which is a bit more stiff and just because it's a little bit more fitted but I still really like it um, and I could definitely see myself knitting another one of these in a more traditional summer yarn like a plant-based cotton or linen or some kind of blend. So I really enjoyed knitting this. I, it has so many beautiful details. I love this neck detail. The back detail is super cool and then the fit is just really nice. I have knit quite a few Ozetta patterns over my knitting career and this year alone I think I've knit three. I knit her Salter Beanie I tested for her. I knit the Moonset Pullover um, in like February and then this is my third Ozetta knit this year. And it probably won't be my last because she just has some really great patterns and they're very reliable. She's lovely to work with and I really enjoyed making this t-shirt. So yeah, I don't know if I'll knit another one this summer, but maybe next summer I will dive into making another one of these, probably in a bigger, a little bit more oversized fit as well. I think I've decided that the I am a medium in Ozetta patterns, which is like the size that's recommended for my bust circumference. So this fits fine, but generally, and it depends on the pattern, but I think for the most part, I usually knit a medium in her stuff. So yeah, that's my first finished object. Not super, like you've seen this before, you know what it is, and, um, but I really enjoyed making it. The pattern is out now, definitely worth your time, and I would highly recommend it. So that is my one and only finished object for today. Um, and I think all of my works in progress you haven't seen before. I've definitely talked to you about them before but I'm not sure I had cast any of them on yet when we talked last. So the first one I'll talk to you about is the Lal Shorts, which is a pattern from Pasquale Knit Design. 
um, and I have so far one leg of the shorts and I cast on the second leg and I was about to start, like I'd done the ribbing and I was about to start the pattern and realized I'd cast on 10 stitches too few. So I need to rip that out and do it again. But this is gonna be one of the little short legs. It's got, I've, I've knit mine with a six inch inseam, so it will be like a medium length short. Um, and I'm making this with the Hobby Rainbow Bamboo Cotton Blend. This yarn was sent to me um, to test, so just being clear about that, I did not pay for it, but I do really like it so far. Um, I really like the drape that it has, I like the color, and I like how it's showing the texture on these shorts. It just has kind of this pearl bump texture that makes it a little bit more interesting than just knitting stockinette in the round. Um, so yeah, so far I'm, I'm enjoying these. It's not like the most engaging knit ever. I'm knitting in a circle. But once I do the other leg, I think I might have a little bit more fun with it because then you join the legs and then start knitting up the waist section. So I don't think these will take me a ton longer if I just actually work on them. Um, so yeah, I need to rip this leg out and start it again, but it's not like super time consuming. I feel like I did this pretty quickly. So depending on how my knitting mojo is, I may have these done by the end of July, but who knows? I'm doing a lot of traveling in July and I feel like I knit less when I travel than I do when I'm at home. So we'll see. I can talk to you about that at the end. But anyway, that's the beginning of my shorts lol. I enjoy the pattern. The pattern's really well written. I find that often yarn brand patterns are not the most well written. Um, I've tried one from Rowan, I've tried one from, ooh, I've tried a couple other ones. The Rowan one I did not love. This one though I think is the best of the yarn brand patterns that I've ever worked with. So really happy with that so far. I think they'll be really cute when they're done. I like the color a lot. So yes, that's my work in progress number one. Actually I have four works in progress which is very unusual for me. I try to keep it at three. but. In an attempt to reclaim my no my mojo, I cast on a new project this week and I've made pretty quick work of it. So we'll get to that at the end. But anyway, this is my work in progress number two, which I've made a decent amount of progress on. This is the Tide Loops Tee by Other Loops. Um, and this is actually inside out. So it's a drop shoulder t-shirt that's meant to have this kind of like wave texture on it. And the wave texture, it's like the reverse stock on that side is facing out. So I just kind of recently joined in, for the underarms. Um, and because there's a lot of purling, she actually has you do a short row and knit it inside out. So this is what the right side actually looks like. Let me flip it around so you can see. This is what it's looking like so far. I think the texture is really beautiful. I think it's gonna be super pretty when it's done, but this is a fingering weight top and it's not the fastest knit. So it's just, this is also the third fingering weight top pattern that I'm working on this summer. I made the, sun, the Sunday tee or my petite knit um, in linen quilt and then I made the air tee in a fingering weight. So this is just, I've just done a lot of small needle projects recently and it's really starting to like feel very slow. So this is what it looks like so far. I'm really happy with it. It's really pretty. Um, the only thing is that you have to, whenever you're doing the actual like textured bits, you really have to pay attention to the chart. Um, so it's not something I can like kind of, I can do mindlessly. I have to be able to pay a little bit of attention to it. And I just have not had the mental capacity to pay a lot of attention to a chart recently. So, um, but it's still, I made like a decent amount of progress. I've joined for the sleeves and I have five skeins of this yarn. It's the Elsbeth Lavold Silky Wool, which I bought at a local yarn store here in Seattle at Acorn Street Shop last summer in their like end of summer sale. This is the color Unbleached and I have five skeins of this, which I think is a little bit less yardage than I really need for the pattern. Um, and I'm about to one and a half skeins in. So once I finish the second skein, I'm gonna add the collar. I'm a little concerned about how small the head hole is, but I think it'll be okay. It's just gonna be quite close fitting. Um, but yeah, and I have these stitches in the back on hold still, but everything else I'm fine with. The yarn is interesting. It's 40% wool, 30% silk. Let me look, get this right for you. 45% wool, 35% silk, and 20% nylon. Um, and it's an interesting feeling. It does feel a little bit rusticy. Um, and the silk, I think, is what gives it the kind of heathered look. It's that like nubby silk. It's not like a smooth 
silk like we think. It's more of like an oil silk, I think is what it's called. I've never used the Knitting for Olive silk, but um, I think it's maybe similar. I don't know. It's not the smoothest. And the nylon, you can definitely see. There's something about like man-made fibers and yarns that gives it like in the sun, like a little bit of a sheen. That's not my favorite, but overall, this yarn was very affordable. I think I paid like $30 for all of the yarn for this project. So I'm happy with that. And I'm happy to be getting it out of my stash. And I do really like the texture that it's making. I think it'll be really cool when it's finished. So that is my Tied Loops tee. I'm making good progress. I would really like to wear this to Flock Fiber Festival, which we can talk about at the end of the video as well, um, which is a yarn. It's a yarn festival that will be happening in Seattle the first weekend of August. And they're having a knit along, like a tea and tank knit along for Flock. And I would really like to have this done for the festival so that I can wear it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be motivated enough to do that, but like all things considered, I've done the whole top. You have to do two chart repeats for the bottom or for the body of the shirt. And I've done, I wanna say there's like four sections on the, on the chart repeat and I've done the first one. So we'll see. And the sleeves, like they won't take me that long. So I just have to kind of have a month. I feel like that's normal. I could guess, I guess pace myself and say like, I'll do one, I'll finish the chart repeat so if there's two body chart repeats and then the two sleeves, if I do one body chart repeat each week and then one sleeve each week, then I should be able to have it done in plenty of time. And it doesn't take, I don't know, it's not the fastest, it's also not the slowest. This is on three millimeter needles. Uh, it's a 24 stitch gauge, I wanna say, and this t-shirt was a 26 stitch gauge and I made it up pretty quickly. So I was also on a, a deadline for that, but maybe if I treat this more like a deadline knit, I could finish it in time for flock. I think it would be really nice to wear at the festival. It's just so pretty and interesting. Um, so yeah, maybe that'll be my goal is I'll try and finish this for the festival. And if I do one chart repeat this week, one next week, and then one sleeve each of the following weeks, that should be fine. And that I can maybe even get it done faster than that. Who knows? But yes, I will just keep working on this. And honestly, what I did, I'm trying to think. I cast this on the second week of June and I had done like the back panel. I did a lot of this while I was on an airplane traveling. Um, like most of the back panel I did in an airplane and then the most of the front section I've done, I did in like a week. So yeah, I think I can do it. I just have to do it, which is <laughs> the challenge, um, especially when you're feeling a little low on the mojo to knit on teeny tiny little needles can be difficult, but that's okay. I really wanna have that done for the festival. So that's what I'm gonna work on. Um, my next work in progress is not super interesting. It's just a little sock project, a toe up sock that I'm kind of freestyling. I have some fun ideas for what I want this sock to look like, um, but I'm not sure how it's gonna execute. Basically, I wanna do, I'm doing a toe up sock, a flegal heel, that's my favorite toe up sock that I've done so far. And then I wanna do some kind of, I'm just, it's gonna be plain sock up until like around the leg. I wanna do some kind of like botanical motif, either like leaves or, tree branches or flowers or something. I need to find the right motif. Um, but that's my plan. This is just some hand dyed sock yarn that I bought last year at a thrift store. I was in California with my mom and we were at a thrift store and there was just like this bag of miscellaneous yarn. And I saw this yarn in that bag and this is the yarn that made me feel inspired to buy that bag of yarn. It was like $5 for the bag of yarn and there were like four or five different skeins in there. And this one was the one that pulled me in. It's like this really pretty hand dyed sock yarn and all of these pretty shades of green. I think this pooling is looking really pretty. Um, the way that the colors are kind of striping, but organically, I don't know. So I, this is, a, I have a hundred grams of this yarn. I split it into two 50 gram balls, but I find that I honestly end up using 50 grams for a whole pair of socks. I don't love my socks super long. I do like maybe a five inch leg at the most. So I might be able to eke two pairs of socks out of this yarn, either like one slightly longer and one slightly shorter pair maybe. I don't know. And for right now, I'm just planning to finish this pair. And this is mostly what I work on when I'm at the movie theater. We've seen a lot of movies recently. June and July are always big, big movie months. So I've mostly worked on this at the movie theater. I'm using my little um, Chow Goo Shorty interchangeable needles on this, which they, I will say, I don't knit very quickly on these. Um, I do a short tip in my left hand and a longer tip in my right hand. So I have a two inch tip on 
the left and a three inch tip on the right just because I find it more comfortable that way, but it's still not super fast. Um, so I think I'm like maybe an inch away from getting started on my heel and then I'll just keep going from there. I'm not really on a deadline with these. These are just kind of a, my on the go project that I keep in my purse um, for at the movies or on the bus or wherever I might be in the waiting room or whatever. So that's this. I'll just keep working on it. It's not urgent, but it's good to have. And I cast this on a couple weeks ago, so that's coming along. It's just always nice to have a sock project on the go. I haven't, I feel like I work on a pair of socks like every three months or so I get the itch to cast a pair on. So that's gonna be my third pair of socks for the year. Is it, or is it just my second? Maybe it's just my second pair of socks for the year. We'll see. Um, but yeah, oh, so far so good on those. Um, okay, and then this is my most recent cast on. I'm making the Frankie sweater, the Frankie Ginser from this Sennis Garn pattern book that I bought last year and have knit so many things from. Let's see, here's all the patterns in the book. I've knit this sweater, I'm gonna knit this sweater, I've knit this, I've knit this, I'm now knitting this, I've knit this, um, yeah. So I've, made, I've gotten my money's worth out of this, even though I did pay like kind of a lot for it because I got it shipped all the way to me from the UK. Um, but yes, I'm making the Frankie sweater, which is this one on the front with the really long ribbing on the body and on the cuffs. And it kind of has this interesting saddle shoulder compound raglan -y construction. Um, and I'm making it in Hobby Friends Wool. This yarn was also kindly gifted to me um, to test out. So, just disclaimer on that, but I really like it so far. I'm on my third ball of this yarn and I am almost done with the raglan actually. And I wanna say I cast this on like a week ago. So it's gone pretty quick. I think I just needed something on larger needles. I'm knitting this on 4.5 millimeter needles and I've been knitting so many projects on tiny needles lately that I just needed something that would knit up a little faster. And so far it's really helping me feel a bit more inspired to knit by using larger needles. So yeah, um, I will say I'm doing this sweater at kind of a tighter gauge than it calls for. I think the sweater does not come in a ton of sizes, although I know Sennis Garn published like another booklet of just Frankie sweaters at different gauges and for different sizes, for more sizes. Yeah, this comes, in this book it's only in three sizes and the one that I'm making is supposed to have a 129 centimeter bust, which would give me like 35 inches of pot or 35 centimeters of positive ease. That's quite a lot. I usually go for like 15 to 20. Um, and when I, the swatch that I had shown you before, I knit, um, at, this calls for an 18 stitch gauge. I had knit it on needle size a little bit bigger to get that 18 stitch gauge. And then I realized that I really didn't, A, love that fabric. It was just, I think a little too loose for with this yarn alone on an 18 stitch gauge. This pattern is written for like a fluffier yarn. This is the Sennis Garn Brushed Alpaca. And they have another version of the sweater in the Sennis Garn Kuss or Kos, I don't know how to say it, but it's their like blown yarn. So those yarns are a little bit fluffier and fill in the gaps at an 18 stitch gauge a little bit better than this. Um, so I decided to just use the 4.5 millimeter needles that the pattern calls for. And so I think I'm getting a 20 stitch gauge on this. So I think I calculated out and mine will be more like 115 centimeters instead of 129 centimeters, which is perfectly fine with me because I didn't want it to be that oversized. So, and I looked at people's pictures on Instagram and stuff and it just is, it's really big. So I'm fine for it to be a little bit smaller. It will still be oversized and still have some good positive ease in it, but just a little bit less. So yeah, it's this beautiful sapphire blue color from Hobby. And so far so good. I think once I split for sleeves, the next ball I start, I'll put the collar on because I just always like, it's always easier to look at things when they have the collar on. But yeah, you do this kind of saddle shoulder construction. This is the sleeve. So you kind of do a saddle, so you kind of do like a saddle shoulder thing and then you break it to a raglan, but you do increases at different rates. It's a funky construction, kind of similar to the Aros top from Petite Knit, which I actually really love the fit of. It's a similar construction to that. So I'm excited for this. Um, yeah, it's going well, it's going quickly. Um, and I'm, it's like the project I'm most excited about right now. So I'm gonna keep working on it and just 
following the dopamine on that. So that's all the projects I have, not a ton to chat about, but I do have some yarn that I purchased um, and some plans that I wanna to talk to you about. So the first is a sweater from this book, which I, ha I bought maybe like almost two years ago now probably. It's called Scandinavian, Scandinavian Sweaters and it's by a Norwegian author, um, Kristen Viola Odegaard. I think she's very well known in Norway for her patterns, but this is a copy of her book in English. I just found it at my local bookstore, but I think you can get it online. And the pattern I'm gonna be making from this, I've already made one pattern from this before. If you've been watching me for a long time, in 2021, in the fall, I knit, let me find it in here for you so I can show you. I knit her Cathedral Dome sweater, which is this. I knit it in Plotulopi, um, but I ended up giving it to my mom because I didn't really like the fit of it on me. And my mom wears it quite a lot because she never turns the heat on in her house, so it, it keeps her really warm. Um, she wears it when she like goes kayaking and stuff. But I'm gonna do another pattern from this book and this is the Urban Pullover, the Urban Troje. I think is the Norwegian name of it. And so it's this really pretty color work, all over color work, yoked sweater. Um, and it calls for Drops Air, which is a blown yarn. And I know I wanted to make, I've wanted to make this sweater for a long time because last year when we were in Scandinavia, I was looking for some yarn for this and didn't find any, but it was on my wish list. And, but then um, there is a local, well, kind of a local yarn store, a online yarn distributor based in Seattle called Little Knits. Um, if you've never heard of them before, I would highly recommend. Basically, I think they end up just kind of being like a yarn liquidator. So they all of their yarn on their website is kind of discounted. Um, and they have all sorts of popular brands like Rowan Kids Silk Haze, and they sell Noro yarns, and they sell Cascade yarns, and they sell Ella Ray and um, Jameson of Shetland, and like mo many many popular commonly well-known yarn brands they have on their website but they're at like a 30 to 40 percent discount um and i get email alerts from them <laughs> and they sent me an email alert that they had a sale on this yarn which is the cascade aereo um which is a blown yarn this one is 47 percent merino 31 percent baby alpaca and 22 percent nylon so if you look if i can get it to, to focus it's that kind of yarn that where the Merino and alpaca fibers are blown into this nylon tube. Um, very similar to Drops Air or Barocco Mochi or Sendeskar and Kos, Kos. Um, what are some other ones? That category of uh, Camarosa Snefnug, I think is also a blown yarn. Yarns in that realm. Um, and this was on sale for, I think, $7 a skein, which is really good because this is a 100 gram skein, which has 240 yards or 220 meters of yarn in it. And I want to say, you know, for me to get Drops Air in the US, it's about $5, $5.50 a skein if I was to order it from Wool, Wool Warehouse or something. And like Broco Mochi, I think, is like $12. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that blown yarns generally tend to be quite expensive. Um, so I felt like this was a really good deal. And um, the other thing I like about little, little Knits is they'll often sell you like a pack of five for an even more discounted price. So I think individually this was like $7 a skein, but if you bought like a whole yarn pack of five, because often yarn, when it gets shipped to wholesalers to, for like yarn shops, it comes in bags of five or like 500 grams. Um, if you buy the bag of five, there's like an, a discount on top of that. So I think it was like $30 for five or seven dollars a skein so it was like five dollars off or something i ended up buying seven skeins so i bought four no six skeins of this brown color which is the color it's not color number six i want to say it's like walnut or something and then i bought one ball of the white off-white color which i've already wound up because i did swatch already for this um so yeah i'm gonna make it in this a little bit softer of a color than this black and white version um, but I'm really excited about it because this yarn is incredibly, incredibly soft. Like some of the softest yarn I've ever felt. I'm slightly concerned about pilling and I was a little concerned about pilling before I bought it, but I'm hopeful that the color work will help it pill a little bit less because on the back, the yarn strands will like wrap around each other and kind of help with structure. I don't know if that will keep it from pilling on the front, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, 
So yeah, that's what this yarn is for. The only thing that I'm deciding right now, so if you look at this sweater, it's actually knit from the bottom up, which I've seen before in raglans occasionally, but I don't think I've ever seen a bottom up yoked sweater. Um, and you can tell, so if you look really closely at the pictures, um, the way, basically the V's of the knit stitches, you, your knit stitches will either go like the V's, the legs of the V's will go up or down depending on which direction that you knit it in. And because this is knit bottom up, the V part, like the pointy legs are at the top of these motifs. So like if you see, I'm not sure you're going to be able to tell, but on the top of these little square motifs, the legs are like pointy at the top. And I'm not sure that I love that look. I would, I think I would rather it be the other way around. And I also think it would be easier to knit it top down because then I could try it on as I'm going um, and make sure that everything's fitting right. So I think I'm going to adapt it to be top down, which should be fine. You just do the charts in the opposite direction. They're symmetrical, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, I don't think it will make it, it will fundamentally change the garment. Basically in the yoke, when it tells me to do de decreases, I'll just do increases, like flip everything. I feel like I have the skills to do that, but, and I think it will be easier. I just, I was going to cast this on and I wanted to do like a nice Italian cast on at the bottom and it was a lot of stitches and they were getting twisted and it was annoying. But if I do it top down, I could very easily do the Italian cast on at the neck, which is fewer stitches and then knit it top down and then just do the bind off on the cuffs and the bottom. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've ever swapped a bottom up to be top down or vice versa. I know that Rebecca from the Crayabea did this. She made the Maya cardigan into a sweater and she flipped it from being bottom up to top down and I don't think she had an issue with it. So I feel like I have the skills and abilities to do it. I just need to do it. Um, but this is definitely more of a fall sweater. So I think once I finish all the works in progress I have now, I'll probably cast this on because I think it will be really, really fun. I've been craving some color work. I know I have my anemone sweater on ice right now, but that's a little bit more of a complex color work than this um, with longer floats and like a little bit more chart attention needed. So I will come back to that in the fall, but I'm very excited about this one. Um, okay, and then I just have a couple other acquisitions for you. I went on a trip this month to Texas, which is where I grew up, um, but I went back to Austin. I was there for a family reunion and we were outside of Austin. So I flew into Austin and we had some time, James and I had some time before we were meeting up with everyone on one of the mornings. And so we went to a yarn store, obviously. Um, we went to Hill Country Weavers, which is in South Austin. Um, and it was one of the biggest yarn stores I've ever seen. It was enormous. It just kept going and going and going. And they had so much yarn. They had like every brand you could imagine, every trendy brand. They had La Bien Aimé and they had um, Farmer's Daughter Fibers and they had Mag, I think they had Magpie Fibers and they had Barocco and they, and they had Sunnisgarn and they had Rowan and Noro and they had like everything. The only trendy brand that I didn't see that they didn't carry was Knitting for Olive. Um, but they carried pretty much every, any other yarn you could imagine. Um, and they also had this really big sale section in the back. And if you know me, I'm kind of thrifty. Like I don't, I don't s normally spend a lot of money on yarn. So I was obviously drawn to the sale section and they had some really good stuff in there. And so I ended up kind of going on a little splurge. I got some fun stuff. I bought three skeins of this John Arbin knit by numbers DK. This is the color 60. Um, and I, this was just like at the same time that Laura Penrose from Penrose Knits was doing her John Arbin tour and like I was feeling very inspired. So this is the yarn. It's this, it's def, it's like a marly, not really marly, it's a heathery dyed in the wool blended fiber. So it's green, but it has like yellow and blue flecks in it. It's really pretty. It's 100% merino and it's so soft. Um, and I have three skeins of this. These are 100 grams. 250 meters, so 750 meters of this, I, which is not really enough for like a sweater. I think I'm gonna use it for some accessories of some kind, maybe a gift knit, um, but I just wanted to try this yarn. It's super soft, super pretty, and it was on sale for $11.75 a skein, which is a pretty good deal, I feel like, for like a British wool, nice soft merino. So that one was fun, and then I got two, these two skeins. Um, 
These are called Classic Fresco by Classic Elite. They are 60% wool, 30% baby alpaca, and 10% angora. They are a fingering weight. 50 grams is 164 yards, so probably about 150 meters. It's more of a sport maybe. But my plan for these, I bought them, I was thinking I could make a gift knit, like a, maybe for a baby or something, like a striped sweater. I don't know, I thought that could be cute. And these colors are general neutral enough so that whoever I know who has a baby next could have a cute little sweater. So I have like 300 meters of this yarn, not a ton. I could do like hats or headbands or something or like work them into a color work project. I don't know. I just thought they were $5 each and I was like, eh, why not? So yeah, that was my other thing. And I will put some footage of the store in as well for you to look at because it's a beautiful store. The workers were very kind and they seemed lovely. So yeah, that was my little souvenir yarn that I got and it was a good trip. Um, I guess we'll transition to life updates now. It was a good trip. It was incredibly hot, but it was great to see my family. Um, and then we came back home and it's been quite warm and we've had construction going on in our home. We've been doing renovations for months now and we're getting closer, but not done yet. Um, so hopefully they will be done soon. But yeah, that is kind of it for me for this month. In July, I'm going to go to back to Texas again. We're going to be watching James's, well, our niece and nephew from James's sister's kids for a week and a half Well, her parents go to Scotland. So because we're doing them a big favor watching their kids, I'm gonna send her with a little wish list for some yarns that I want to try. I would really love to get my hands on some of the Wee County um, yarns, Kinross 4 ply. If you follow Rebecca from the Caribe, I'm sure you've heard about this, but it seems divine. And I think I would like a fingering weight sweater which with all the fingering weight knitting I've been doing recently, that hurts me a little bit to say, but I think I just don't find myself, especially in like this transitional seasons, I don't wear my super heavy chunky knits as much. I think I might wear a lighter sweater a little bit more. So I may have her pick up some Kinross four ply for me. And actually I need to ask her where she's staying because I may just end up ordering stuff online and having it shipped to where she's staying. I think if that's the case, then I'm gonna order a woolly knit cone maybe because the shipping to the US is quite expensive but if I can just get it shipped within the UK then she could bring it home for me that would be ideal if there are any other Scottish exclusive yarns that you all recommend that I should try that I should see if my sister-in-law or my mother-in-law can pick up for me while they're abroad let me know I'm happy to take your recommendations you have if you've watched my videos you know what I like I tend to like non superwash more rusticy wools and greens and blues and grays and beiges and you know kind of earthier tones so let me know what you think um what else did i say i was going to talk about later movies i've seen so many movies this month we saw asteroid city we saw elemental the new pixar movie very cute asteroid city was fine it's not my favorite Wes anderson movie but it, i they're all pretty to look at at least so that was good what else did we see we saw Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw, I don't even remember. Oh, Indiana Jones. I really liked the new Indiana Jones movie. I've seen a couple other ones. We go to the movies quite a lot. So I've been doing a lot of movie knitting. Um, and the last thing to talk about was Flock Fiber Festival. So yes, if you live in the Puget Sound, Washington area, Flock Fiber Festival is happening the first week of August. It's the fourth, fifth, and sixth, I want to say, or third, fourth, and fifth. First weekend of August, they're having, it's basically like a market. I don't know that there's a lot of classes or things associated with the festival, but there will be lots of cool vendors there. And the marketplace is open on Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday. You have to purchase tickets. I think I saw that the tickets for Saturday are currently sold out, but you can buy them at the door, which is what I will be doing because I did not plan ahead and have not purchased my tickets. My mom's gonna come up for the weekend, which will be really fun. And I think we're gonna go on Saturday. So if you if you are also planning to go to Flock on Saturday and you wanna say hello, please do. If you see me, like wave me down and say hello. It would be great to see you um, and do a little chit chat if, um, if you're there. So yeah, let me, I'm excited to see there's gonna be some really cool yarns there to see in person. The show is being put on by La Mercerie, which is a yarn store in on Bainbridge Island, which is very close to Seattle. Um, and I think it'll just be like a really nice event. Um, so yeah, if you see me, say hello. It'll be great to meet you all there. 
and um, Marlene from Marlene's Knits is coming all the way from Germany and I'm very excited to meet her and see her. She's lovely. We chat on Instagram and I'm really excited to meet her in person and I think it'll just be a really nice weekend. Hopefully the weather's nice and we can just enjoy squeezing a lot of beautiful yarn. So yeah, that is I think it for me today. A little shorter video today but um, I've got to get some knitting done so that we have more to talk about in August. So thank you all for being here um, and thanks for watching my previous videos and supporting me. I really appreciate having you here. love reading your comments um, and seeing what you guys are up to, hearing what you guys are up to. So thanks for um, always being here and watching and being the best um, and kindest and happiest group of people ever. I hope that you are enjoying the summertime. I hope that you are getting some rest and relaxation and sunshine and staying comfortable and happy. So um, yeah, let me know what you've been working on. Let me know how things are going for you and I will see you again very soon.